All right. All right. First of all, hi, everyone. Welcome to Walking Down a Different Path, uh, Curanderismo Cleansing Rights. I want to thank you all for coming. I want to, first of all, thank Joni and Jace for the opportunity. I'm ever indebted to you. Thank you so much uh, for letting me talk about my people and being Mexican and talking about all our fun Mexican things. So thank you for that. Um, just, I want to give you a brief little intro, intro to myself. I know I didn't really much put anything in the event because I, I, I love to talk. So I figured it'd be more fun just to talk about it. So um, I will start with, um, I am non-binary. So I use they, them pronouns to kind of just kind of go with that, which is interesting given our practice and how, how gendered a lot of what we do within within magic, within the craft is is done. Like it's just, it's interesting. It kind of blows my mind. Um, one of my, my patron, I guess, deity is the divine mother spirit. So I work a lot with the divine mother, which is, I thought is really interesting because um, she's something that's been really close to me for a really long time, ever since I lost. Uh, my great grandmother uh, about 16 years ago, like it's just one of those where I found that connection and it's just been forged ever since. Um, going through the different iterations of the Divine Mother, um, one of her iterations is, is uh, the Virgin Mary or what we oh, uh, the apparition of the Guadalupe, the Arbi La Virgen de Guadalupe, which has a shrine in my hometown. And I actually was born on one of the days of one of her feasts. So like we have this really like intense connection. It's kind of interesting. But um, the reason I bring that up is because it, the depiction of La Virgen de Guadalupe is actually the depiction of Donatzi, one of the um, Aztec goddesses, which I thought was really interesting because she's also the divine mother spirit. So it's, it's a really interesting connection. And um, I bring that up again to talk because I'm, like I said, I'm not binary. I just have this connection to, to the divine and it's just an interesting path that I've taken over the years. Um, January, I celebrated my 21st year so, uh, practicing the craft which not bragging, but I just thought that was really cool. It hit January and I was sitting down, I was like, oh my God, it's been 21 years. I don't have all the answers to everything because you know, then I wouldn't be, there'd be no point of living you know, because we have to keep going and keep learning, keep finding this connection and finding who we are and how we connect to the outside world and how we connect to each other, first of all. And I feel like that kind of led to this resurgence of me kind of going back and exploring my roots. So um, with, kind of in that same tangent here, I'm gonna tell a short little story about how I was introduced to Corandarismo as a young child. Growing up in, a, in the Rio Grande Valley, it's a very predominantly Hispanic area with very heavily, um, not heavy, with very um, strong Mexican roots. So there's a lot of, a lot of culture that, that, that permeates everyday life. You know, you're used to walking into someone's home and there's, um, you have a little pillar candles that have, you know, one of the saints or the Virgin Mary, or, you know, you have that going, it's not in common. You know, it's just, it's a big part of the life of our lives. I, as a child, I was about eight or so, we took a family trip to go visit some other family that was out of state, one of my mom's uh, brothers. While we were over there, we were in a 50 passenger van and on the way to the, back to the airport to come back home, there was an accident. Someone ran a stop and they hit the side of the van. And I mean, we're all okay. Nobody was, you know, injured, gravely injured or anything. But um, obviously the van was destroyed, which is really funny because it hit in a spot and like the van just kind of split. So this is kind of funny. It's just worth because of the impact. I mean, we're all okay. Everybody was fine. And when we got back home, my late great grandmother said, I need everybody to come over. Um, she was like, Los tengo que, que curar de susto, which means I need to, I need to, um, like cure, and not not cure, but I need to help deal with your with the fear that, that you have inside of you because of this accident. So at the time, at the time, my aunt was uh, seven months pregnant with one of my cousins, and so her big thing was like, you know, we have to make sure the baby's gonna be okay. So as a kid, you know, I didn't really quite understand what was happening. So we, you know, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Mom's like, we're gonna go see your grandma. Like, I was like, all right. So we get in the car, we get there. And at this point, I didn't really understand what was happening. So you walk into the, into, her, into, into the house, we're sitting down, we're sitting on the couch, she brings us water and coffee. And then she says, okay, one by one, I'm gonna take you to the back and then we're gonna go ahead. She says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, she's talking to us in Spanish, so I'm gonna do the thing. And, you know, so we walked over and it was, it was my aunt's turn to my aunt's like, and I was, I was sitting next to her. She's like, she says, well, why don't you come with me? You know, you can just sit and you just wait and you can go next. So I was like, okay. So I sat there, my grandmother turns, my great grandmother turns and says, don't say anything, just sit quietly. Don't make noise, just sit quiet. I was like, okay. I was like, what's going on? I was freaking out. I didn't know what's happening. So I'm sitting there, you know, sitting in the chair, you know, just being polite, being respectful. And my grandmother pulls out what looks like a bouquet, but it's all sorts of like dried herbs and 
I, now I, I just wish I knew what was in there, but I don't know what it is now. But it was just a, just a big bush of like dried herbs. And I was like, oh my God, what is she gonna do? Like, what is this lady gonna do? So I was like, you know, so I'm sitting there watching. So, you know, she, she puts her house, she puts the, the bush down, she, she lays my hand on the bed, covers her with, um, where's, um, with a crocheted little, like one of these little doilies that she crocheted by hand, covers her face with it. And I was like, oh my God, what is this lady gonna do? As a kid, you know, you watch all the movies, you're just like, oh my God, this is how it ends. Like, we're gonna die, like, we're gonna die. You know, really dramatic, you know. So then she, you know, she puts her hands together. She, she starts to pray. She starts to pray in Spanish. She prays a uh, Hail Mary. She prays in Our Father. And she goes through the whole thing. Starts to pray. And she's like, you know, she was all right. She's, we're going to get started. She's, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And then just answer me. Walks through. She does the whole thing. And I'm just looking at her like, what is happening? So I was like, okay. So then, you know, she finished up with my aunt. And then she turns over to me. She's like, okay, you're next. Come and lay down. So I was like, okay. So I lay down. And she puts, she covers me. She's like, don't move don't laugh. She's like, I promise you, if you laugh, I'll have to start over. Don't move, don't laugh, don't make a sound. So I'm like, okay, so little eight-year-old me is laying there like, do, 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 what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? Does it, starts to pray, she goes over me, and then she brushes my nose, and I start laughing, because it tickles. And she's like, I told you, don't move. And I was like, I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry, you know, tickled. Continues, you know, starts over, goes gone about three or four times, and the last time she was like, if you move, I'm gonna hit you. I was like, okay, I was like, please don't, okay. Lay in there, she finishes, and then, you know, we left, you know, finished up, closed the prayers, said goodbye, helped her wash dishes, put everything away, and my mom and I left. We get in the car and asked my mom, okay, it's like, so what just happened? Like, what just happened? I don't understand. Mom explained it to me, she's like, well, she basically did um, kind of like a leap, yeah, she, she took away that, that negative energy that's, that was surrounding your aura, because of all these things, that the, all the effects that it can have as far as stress, all these kind of things, it'll, it'll do things to your body. She's like, and that's her way of clearing it out so that this doesn't build up and create this, this toxicity that you'll have to deal with later. You'll have to end up with all these problems, all this kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't understand, but okay, cool, whatever. Well, then a couple of years passed and I got older and you know, you hit the middle school, you start watching all the fun movies. So I watching that's the first time I ever saw the crafts and I was like, that's, that's my life. That's what I want to do. You know, so then I kind of started looking started doing the research, kind of got dedicated. And then I was like, so my great grandmother is a good aunt. I was like, that's what she is. I was like, I was like, why don't you just tell me that, mom? And she's like, well, I didn't know that you knew what that word meant. And I was like, well, I mean, do we really know what that word means? I was like, you know, and that's kind of what leads us into the discussion for today, which is a nice little segue. It's like, you know, we hear the word curanderismo, curandera, curandero. You know, do we hear that? Do we really know what that word means? You know, this is where I like to do like interactive presentations. So feel free to like shoot your hand up if you want to. You want to. You want to chime in if ask a question. But, you know, um, first of all, have y'all, outside of the event, have y'all heard of the term curandero or curandera or curanderismo? Yes? Okay, cool. Um, Susan, if you don't mind me just kind of picking on you here, um, you want to tell us what you think it means or what it means to you? Oh, I mean, I'm somewhat familiar. Okay, cool. With I have done a little bit of reading. I wouldn't say I'm okay. like hugely knowledgeable. <laughs> okay, cool. No, that's cool. That's cool. I've encountered it, but definitely, I, and I, this is something I've noticed in the group, and I expected it when I joined, but mm -hmm. my magical practice is much more folk magic from the Americas okay. than European Wiccan, because that's not what I started out learning. Okay, I started cool. out learning root work, and there is definitely overlap intersection okay cool I'm, glad, ideas. I'm actually glad you brought, i'm glad you brought that up because that's a point that i'm going to talk about later because i've done this is why i started expanding my research and like i said i, I like to know things because i'm nosy i like to know things so i like to do the research and as an academic that's kind of that's kind of my job is to really go out and do the research to learn the things and you know and especially the sociologists to understand the world understand why it happens how our interactions work with one another and how we you know how we form connections and how we how we create our identity our sense of identity capital i you know so to kind of fill everyone else and to kind of fill in so curanderismo is essentially the practice of healing so it's it's basically healers shaman um depending on that term is loosely debated because there's not quite an accurate term but um one of the, the predominant authors that does a lot of, that has done a lot of research on curanderismo 
kind of it's kind of the general consensus is I don't think there's a word in the lexicon that exists just yet that describes exactly what a curandera or curandera does. But it's basically um, traditional healing practices that use root work, that use folk magic, that use herbs, that use waters, that use prayers, and it's it's just this fun, beautiful mix of modalities, you know, and, and it's, and it's, it's something that I, I will not use a label on myself as a curandero, I will not use that label, because I, from, from the research I've done, from what I've understood, it's something that you have to be, like, be initiated into, you have to be trained, it's kind of passed down within, you know, within the families, because it's typically, oh, I gotta learn, okay, well, go see your grandmother, go talk to her, and while I have some training, it's not, I don't feel like it's enough to say, yes, I am a curandero, you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's enough, I would feel like I'm appropriating the term, even though, I mean, I'm not, but I just, I feel like I would be. But one of the fun things about curanderismo is that it's, it's kind of basically like being a doctor just without the official license and without the fun, hefty salary that comes with it, you know, but it's, it's that beautiful sense of truly healing and truly bringing healing to your community, to family, to friends, to those who need it, you know, and that, that's what drew me into this, you know, and some curanderos will use herbs, they'll use, like I said, they use waters, they'll use, um, mud even i've seen a couple that will use mud and all their stuff now um one of the fun things is when i talk about the blending of cultures and this is something that, that i've noticed a lot from back home is you'll see this this interjection of roman of roman catholicism into curanderismo healing practices oftentimes you'll hear prayers to saints such as saint jude who is a patron saint for uh miracles and lost causes and and hopelessness you know and i and as a matter of fact the city where i'm from has a shrine dedicated to saint jude and I've been, I've, I mean, you go and it's, you see votive candles just lit, you know, you see people coming and going to make promises, making, you know, asking for all sorts of things. And as, and as a matter of fact, and my dissertation starts off, um, the first opening, like you open the dissertation, you see chapter one, the first thing you see is an excerpt to the prayer to St. Jude asking for, for a miracle, you know, and, and, and it's, and thinking back to this connection, you know, and, and, going and all the times we'd go to the to, to the shrine and we'd go at least once, twice a week, at least, you know, you would see people would have like prom dresses, wedding gowns, photos, locks of hair, all sorts of offerings, what we call ofrendas, you know, just, you know, I'm offering this to you because I'm asking for your help, I'm asking for your assistance, you know? And I mean, if you sit there long enough, it's, it's a place of peace, it's a place of, of prayer. And you'll hear people just, just I mean, pouring their heart and souls. And one thing is, and as we know, those are, as we practice the craft, we know that the biggest thing is intent. You know, you just hear them pouring their hearts and souls, asking for this intercession, asking for this miracle. And it's just sitting there, you sit long enough, and it's just a beautiful thing to hear and see, and you feel the presence, you feel the power, you just, you feel it. That kind of really drew me in. I was like, you know, well, this is really interesting. This is, this is, you know, especially coming from a sociologist perspective, you know, I've seen this where I'm pulling myself out of the situation, just kind of watching, observing, you know, you just see how these people, how the followers are so devout. So that kind of led me to do a little, I was like, let's dig into the research. Let's see what's out there. Let's see, let's see what the literature says. Let's see what studies have been done. Let's see what people have said. You know, and it's 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 interesting because you find this sense of duality, almost like a dichotomy, where you have your the curanderos who practice this decolonized sense of of faith and practice, so juxtaposed with colonized practice. You know, that comes from settlement through the church, through you know all sorts of things, and you see these separate identities, kind of clashing, but at the same time working harmoniously, creating this new sense of of um, healing modality. You know, and, it, and it's interesting because. Um, one of the, the rites that we're going to talk about today is called a limpia. It's, it's, it's a cleansing, essentially. Now, this is a cleansing rite that clears, heals, and revitalizes the mind, the body, and the spirit, and the soul. And also, it, it sometimes will facilitate what we call soul retrieval, which basically is every time we experience some kind of a traumatic event or some kind of, you know, some kind of, some kind of issue, situation that, that hits us pretty heavy, a part of our soul kind of just, a part of our soul's energy just kind of lingers and it just leaves our body. So through the yes, through healing practices, whatever you want to address it, you know, we're bringing these back and calling this energy back into us to make us feel whole again. Sometimes it's easy and it's like, yeah, cool, not very much work, but sometimes you got to do the work, TM. You know, it's got to put in the hard, the heavy work, you know, and that's, that's the, the, the fun part about all of this is you have somebody to guide you. You have somebody that's working with you, that believes in you, that's that's there to help you through these through the dark times, you know. And it's it's interesting because 
I, I got a crab on my foot. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I got a crab on my big toe. Ooh, okay. Now, um, these limpias kind of serve as a multi-level cleansing. You know, it's not just within our body, it's within our mind, within our spirit, within our soul. Sometimes it's, it's even our environment and it, it, it can transcend space and time. And one of the things that I like that I mentioned a lot about and you can ask any one of my best friends and they will, they will confirm it. I've always said, we are the culmination of our ancestors' wildest hopes and dreams. We're doing things that they never thought they would be able to do openly and publicly. You know, for one of the big things would be practicing Buddhism or, or just practicing our faith in general. You know, because we were colonized, because we were told this is wrong, this is, you know, this isn't right, you know, and we're doing this and we're just culmination, but we also have their traumas a generational trauma that has just compounded over the generations, over generations, has never been healed. And that's where we come into play. And it's like, you know, we've got to heal these things. We have to work through this. And doing the work transcends space and time. It heals their pain, but it also heals our own. And it helps us move forward because we have their memories. We have their, their instincts inside of us. And they're constantly watching over us and keeping us safe and ready to go to battle for us. You know, so it's kind of the least that we could do for them. Just kind of turn around and say, you know, get this happen, but I'm doing the work to help heal the pain that you experienced. And it's fun because it incorporates multiple holistic, heal holistic healing practices, which oftentimes can use herbs such as teas or, or even for incense, like I've got some copal going right now or had it going earlier, excuse me, and also uses meditative practices. So it takes a lot of sitting down and really looking inside and working on the stuff that's inside that needs to be healed and brought to the surface, which it's it's interesting. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that because that's one of the specialties, the subspecialties of curanderismo. Now, um, like I mentioned, limpias are one of the most common rites within curanderismo itself because of their high utility. They tend to facilitate holistic cleansing, holistic healing, positive transformation, renewal, rejuvenation, Sometimes separately, sometimes all at once, sometimes it hits you like a sack of bricks and you wake up, whoa, that was a lot, that was a lot. You know, after you finish up a session, it's like, that was a lot. You know, and you feel the tension leave your body and you just kind of like, I can breathe again. You know, I can, I can, I feel whole. You know, I feel like, you know, I've had this part of my life that's, that's gone. You know, I remember um, a few years ago, three years ago, actually, I lost my uncle who was like a father figure to me. And it finished, and I was talking to a really good friend of mine who is a curandera, she's based in San Antonio. We sat there, we're talking, and she's like, well, let's let's have a session, let's do a platica. She's like, it's a session where you just talk and just let it out. So I remember, I mean, we were really close. I was really close to my uncle. He's like, like, like I said, he's a father figure to me. He passed suddenly and just gravely, it was just, I mean, insane. It was just happened overnight, just lost him. So I mean, I had a lot that I was thinking, I was being there for my, my, my cousins, being there for my aunt, you know, this is my godfather as well. So it's just, you know, kind of grieving and mourning. I remember sitting in the room with her. She lit the incense, she prayed, and she was, okay, talk to me. Just talk, let it out. We finished, I was sobbing like two minutes and I was just, I mean, heavy sobbing, just letting it all out. The session finished, she gave me a cup of tea. I just sat there and I felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders. And I was like, you know, and I told her, I was like, you know, this is a beautiful gift that you have. You know, I mean, I just, I feel like I literally have just left everything at the altar, you know, and I feel like I'm, I've healed. You know, I've grieved, I've mourned, you know, I've had this opportunity. I was like, this is something that's beautiful and I want to learn how to do this. So, you know, and there she gave me some book recommendations that, you know, read these books and, you know, we'll go from there. And we'll meet, you know, we, we have video chats every now and then just to kind of, well, where are you at now? What are you learning now? What are you reading? What are you doing? You're like, let's, let's facilitate sessions together. And, you know, so it's something that it, having had experienced one, it's something I want to share with everyone. And I want everyone to be able to feel that sense of like, you know, I was able to let it all out and, just, and heal, you know, in a safe space, in a sacred safe space where I know that it's okay and there's, it's free from judgment. It's free from, you know, someone telling me that I can't do it, that I should be strong. I mean, it's, it's, no, no, it's okay. I will be strong for you. You let it out, you know, and it's just, it's a, like I said, it's a beautiful experience. And that's something that I'm glad I'm able to share with the world. Hitting to the more, you know, academic side of things, because like I said, I'm an academic, you know, we know that the process is not linear. We know that healing is in a straight line. You have good days, you have bad, you know, it goes all over the place, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes, sometimes you go in squiggles and circles and spirals and you start over again and, you know, pick it up again and you, you keep going. It's not linear. 
Now, um, these kinds of practices are imbued with multivalent meanings and expressions. They can facilitate healing, purification, birth, and rebirth, sometimes simultaneously, sometimes one after the other. So it's a cycle, it's a process, but in the end, it helps, it helps the healing process. Now, one of the best parts about this um, is embracing decolonization. You know, and it comes with reclaiming our indigenous health practices. It comes with embracing, again, decolonization and becoming and embracing our, our original identities as who we are as people. You know, and it's fun because it, it, it helps us correct historically inaccurate, derided, ridiculed, and even misappropriated depictions. Because I will tell you some of the depictions of curanderismo that I have seen on screen, it's like, oh, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Like, it doesn't work that way. It's not, you know, you're making, you're painting this into a bad light. It's not what this is. This is a beautiful healing process, a beautiful healing ceremony. You know, you're sitting here, you pass a cup of tea around, you know, you have the incense going, this beautiful sacred space, and you're depicting something that's not anywhere near what this actually is and what it can actually be. And that's, that's where we get to, in, to embrace this and say, well, actually, it's not really what it's like. Let me show you. You know, also continuing these traditions brings a sense of healing through epistemology. You know, and this brings us, allow, this allows us to claim the histories and traditions as worthy of examination, as worthy of exploration, as worthy of production to bring a sense of embodiment of choice and how we choose to, to identify with ourselves and our stories. You know, and it's fun having a platform like this. And again, once again, thank you for it because it allows us to tell our story. It allows us to share this with the world because it's something that if I didn't have an opportunity to learn about this, this kind of stuff, I'd be lost. You know, especially given the fact that, you know, I'm so far away from home that it's like, you know, I have a small sense of community, but it's, it's like, you know, how would I be able to research all of this? You know, especially when people that would practice this typically are elderly people that won't, you wouldn't find online. You wouldn't find them on YouTube. You wouldn't find them, you know, writing books and stuff because this is knowledge that's passed down. It's oral history, you know, and that's what um, I'm, I'm, and I feel like I'm totally going to butcher this, but there is a, a theorist, um, I believe it's Gorian Saldua that mentions, that talks about um, our auto, our auto, auto terroria, which is basically a theory that we write based on our own lived experiences, you know, and it's just this sense of being able to embody that kind of just blows my mind. It really does. It, it allows us to examine such a sacred practice and share it with the world while still respecting these traditions without hitting that sense of appropriation. Which is interesting because that's a whole other topic that I could talk hours and hours about. That's power dynamics, but I promise I won't go on a tangent. Come back to the topic at hand. You know, so kind of returning back to curandarismo, you know, we talked about this idea. The root of the word lies in curar, which means to heal. You know, so therefore, a curandera or a curandero is someone who heals on a holistic level, at mind, at body, and at spirit, and which we kind of talked a little, a little bit about this earlier, but it's just, that was kind of like a really long-winded, like, everyday, like, this is more of an everyday definition. Basically, the process, the practice of healing. Now, um, this approach to healing is, is approached by integrating and understanding the effects of the soul and the spirit on the body and the mind. So, kind of running off on that note, on that tangent there, we know that, for example, we'll use stress as an example, because we all experience stress, especially given the state of the world that we live in, given, you know, that we're almost a year into the pandemic, that, you know, life is probably never going to be the same ever again. And what life was like a year ago, 52 weeks ago, is an entirely different lifetime. You know, we have all this stress, we have all this anxiety, all these things that, that affect our spirit and our soul, you know, but also we know that stress manifests itself in the body. I, for one, will tell you, it, it kills my back. There's days where like, I'll have such severe back pain that I'm just like, oh, I can't get out of bed. I'm just gonna lay here, like, just can't get out of bed. You know, no matter what I do, it's just my, I feel this, this constant pain in my back, you know? And that's brought on by stress. You know, and that, that's something that Guranda Desma would try to aim to, to help process and deal with. Now, earlier I mentioned that um, the subspecialties of Guranda Desma, and this is kind of why I'm gonna talk a little bit about them and I'm just gonna kind of briefly define what they are. So typically curanderos or curanderas will specialize in a subset and a special area. So um, some of the more common types are what we call like a sobadero, which is like a massage therapist. And they typically will use massage and acupressure points 
that are designed to release many of the wounds that we experience, whether they're emotional, whether they're spiritual, they're mental, or even they're physical. You know, and that may be the root cause at the cellular, at the cellular level, which kind of, if anyone's ever had any kind of pain, you know how it could, it could put you in a foul mood real fast. It could make you just angry at the world, just upset, you know, if you're not feeling well, you, know, you sleep wrong, just get annoyed. I know I'm, I know that's me for, for one, I'm usually hop, happy, chipper, go lucky, you know, usually always in a good mood. But if I'm in pain or I'm annoyed at something, it's, I probably slept wrong or, you know, I've got a pain in my back or just got a pain somewhere that I'm just, I'm annoyed. You know, I'm, and that over time will manifest itself and just kind of leaves us like, uh, you know, how, how can I get around this? Now, the next, one of the next specialties is called a partero or a partera, which is kind of like a midwife. They, uh, it's just a distinct specialty that most of them aren't necessarily trained to do. It just kind of just fall into it. And typically they will offer uh, pre and postnatal care for the mother and the child, um, and sometimes even for the entire family. They can serve as dietitians, as counselors, as healers, doctors and nurses. They're there to ensure that the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being of both the mother and the child, and of course the family, because in some in some in some cases, a birth is involves the entire family. You know, and it's and I, I have never been to one of those, and I would rather not because I feel like if a lady's pushing a baby out, I don't think she wants people to look at her while she's pushing the baby out. You know, I'm pretty sure she's in pain. She's angry at the world. Just like, why are you watching me? And I don't don't think that's something you want to share with the world. You know, but I understand the connection behind it because it's this whole sense of not just so much oh, this is what you're gonna do, like bring me, hot, bring me towels, bring me rice, bring me hot water. This is more of an emotional thing. It's like, you know, I'm here to help guide you, to help, to help you do this process. Yes, you're feeling pain, it's okay to feel pain, it's valid, you know, let's work through this pain, let's use these breathing exercises, let's eat this food, let's have these herbs, you know, whatever this case may be, whatever this, this tea may be, you know, this is what we're here for, this is what we're designing, this is what I'm here to help you facilitate so that you can move through this easier. The next one is kind of my favorite. It's kind of where I, I like to dip my toes in a little bit. I won't go as far as calling myself this, but it's a yerbera or a yerbero, which is someone who works primarily with plant medicine. They will have the knowledge of healing and working with flowers, with fruit, with weeds, with tree barks, with vines, with leaves, with vegetables, flowers, fungi, cacti, succulents, you name it. They work with all sorts of plants. And I like to, I, I say that I like to dip my toe there because my toes in that water, in that pond, because that's where the people that typically will work with like salves, with poultices, with tonics, with all sorts of, you know, herbal remedies as far as like teas. As a matter of fact, I'll show you, I'm, I'm brewing a decoction here. I'm infusing some waters, you know, and, and, that, and that's what I've learned through this practice, through this process. You know, and like I said, I won't call myself the knowledge of all the stuff, but I'm learning, I'm getting there. That's kind of where I find myself leaning towards. You know, then you also have what we call a consejero or a consejera, which just like it sounds the counselor. So it's spiritual counseling. It's primarily through the process of talking where they would primarily facil facilitate what we call a platica, where it's just sitting, just kind of letting it all out and just, okay, well, why do you feel, why, why do you feel this way? You know, how does, why does this make you feel in this manner? You know, what can we do to help alleviate some of the stress and let's talk about things. And that's primarily what they do. Then you have what we call an espiritualista, which, works with spirits, the deceased spirits of the family to help bring healing. You also have a mentalista, which prim primarily works with the power of the mind to heal. You have a perfumero or a perfumera, which is another one I like to dip my toes in, which basically is like an aromatherapist. So they'll use the scents to help facilitate healing. You also have a huesero, which is a bone setter, who primarily works with injured or broken bones and kind of almost like a, like a modern day chiropractor. Without the title, all the fancy schooling, they are very painful. I've I went with a friend to see one, and my friend um, dislocated one of her one of her her joints, and it was very painful. I heard the pop from outside the room across the hall. It's very loud. It was it was very painful. I can imagine it's very painful, but you know that's that's one of the, what they do. One of the other fun ones is this is where I would say you know I fall primarily under this umbrella is a, a brujo or a bruja which is someone who works with witchcraft to heal and to manifest and to do all the fun stuff. And that, that's one of the subspecialties. These, these are the people that you see, oh, I know a lady, like, and then they would go to her and she would do the things for them. That's typically what, what you'd hear. And that's usually for the most part, what curanderismo gets, where it gets its bad rep from. And the, because these are sometimes the people that will um, 
will do like compelling spells and domination spells and they'll brew these oils to to control other people take away their free will which i don't believe in doing that take away someone's free will so i'll just throw that out there i don't do that so i'll do that kind of work but you know there are people that do do that so it's just it's interesting it's and you know and that's where we get a lot of the bad rep from and that's where you get a lot of like the tales and the legends of like like um, one of the big things that we grew up with is, is hearing about things called the chusas which are giant owls that are um According to the legend, they are are they they're women witches who transform themselves into birds to fly at night and do their damage, which is, it's interesting. They're they're huge and they're scary. They're scary looking. But um, a brief note on that story: I have you know you always hear that. Oh, I have a story. Um, my great grandmother's oldest one of her one of her brothers supposedly caught one with a chain and was like she was like in a cave and according to the story that we've heard multiple times from multiple different people that when they would go up to, to the like to the cage and they like poke the owl with a stick that the owl would actually speak and just say to let to let her go they would they heard her screech like it was a screech but it was a woman's voice that said let me go let me go and they would just like poke at her and poke at her and then eventually they left her in the cage overnight and supposedly i don't again i don't know you know this was like way back in the day. I, was, I wasn't even alive. Supposedly in the morning when the men went out to like to go look at the cage, there was a woman in there, supposedly. So it was like, that's kind of interesting to see <clears throat> how this legend came about. And then, then they, of course, accused, accused her of, of witchcraft and then put her to death. But that's a whole different story because that was a different time, a different country. And, you know, but that was, it was, it was a little ranch and they were just like, oh, she's a witch. Like she's going to like steal the kids and do all these things to them. And I was like, oh. No, 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 don't do that. But, you know, I mean, and that's, you hear that one story, you know, and you grow up hearing things like that. Like, you know, so as a kid, like I grew up and you hear an owl, like, oh God, there's an owl outside. Like, is that an owl? Is that like, do I have to worry? Like, well, what do I got to do? And it's just, it's, it's interesting to see how, you know, our beliefs, and even from an anthropological point of view, how culture has grown and these stories are shared, which is why having platforms like this and being able to have talks like this really makes a big difference because you get to, to like, to defunct these myths. You know, you really get to talk about them and be like, well, no, it's a misunderstanding. You're misunderstanding the case. You know, maybe, 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 yes, maybe she is a witch, but you don't know what the intentions are. You know, and who are you to like hurt her and cage her, you know? And it's, then it goes into this whole sense of like, you know, well, it's domination, it's about, it's about power. But again, side tangent coming back, like pulling myself back in here. You know, one of the biggest things that comes with Kurandarismo is, you know, you work a lot with the elements. You know, you work a lot with fire, with a lot with water, with wind, because it's, it's through the breath, through breath work, and it, it's just an earth through grounding, meditative states. It's really fun, and it's just this beautiful connection to the elements. I kind of want to focus on fire today, because that's something that I incorporate heavily into my practice. So I want to kind of shift our focus just slightly to one of the many types of the ceremonies that's that appears within curanderismo that we facilitate and we perform and we do on a regular basis. Now, um, fire, let's talk a little bit about fire. That's a fun, you know, it's fun. <laughs> Who doesn't love to look, me, to look at fire and start fires and let a candle blow it out, start a fireplace and a fire in the fireplace and a burn pit. It's just, it's fun, you know, and there's just something about it, something primal, something that just makes us feel safe. You know, and that's one of humankind's most sacred and ancient developments because being able to control fire means we can stay in a place longer. We can stay warm, we can cook food, we can, you know, we're safe. We don't have to worry about creatures in the night that are gonna come and hunt us. You know, this allowed for people to stay in one location longer, which kind of brought a sense of permanence, making us feel like, you know, oh, I'm valid and I can stay in the place where I'm at because I love this location. I don't have to leave and hope that I can come back, you know, next year, two years from now, whenever, you know, the rotation brings us back, you know, that it's still going to be there. You know, this now lets us settle in places and stay there. And, you know, typically when we talk, when we talk a lot about fire, we tend to focus only on the destructive properties. You know, we, we tend to think about how fire destroys things. Uncontrolled fire, you know, wood um woods in the fire that totally came out wrong um wildfires and all this kind of stuff destroying things but fire is also great because it helps us create room for new things in our life yes it it, it um destroys the old but like like in the tarot deck 
death does the same thing. Death signifies rebirth. It signifies this new sense of beginning, a new beginning that you can't go back to the old because we shouldn't go back to the old. Because if we're healing and we're working towards, you know, growing and becoming our, and our, having our souls grow, you don't want to go back to the old because if you go back to the old, you're going to go back and have to repeat the same lesson over and over again, which those of us that um, have experienced some of these lessons on repeat will tell you it's not fun at all. It's not fun to constantly feel this sense of like, yes, I'm growing. Yes, I'm, oh, let me go back to this one thing. No, don't do that. It's like that one ex that always says, oh, I'm going to change, I promise. I'm going to change, I promise. But they never do. And you're just living the same cycle over and over again. And that's oftentimes what happens with when it comes to our healing practices. You know, as we get stuck in these cycles and these loops and we're just kind of like, oh, it'll be different next time. It'll be different. It'll be different. But is it though? Is it? You know, we stop and ask ourselves, is it really going to be different? You know, and I know that's kind of a weird kind of a weird far stretch of just to where we're going but like in the sense of healing you know and like um jace mentioned you know um death is the fertilizer to the new you know and we can't grow anything without there being death you know even if you look at like in terms of like after a wildfire you know once the ground becomes fertile again you start to see life grow you know and that's kind of and that's because of fire you know and that's why i think fire is one of the most important things to work with and it's so amazing and it just takes my breath away every time I see fire because it's 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 like I'm safe you know I'm, I'm okay I'm warm I don't I don't I'm not I feel like I'm not lacking anything you know one of the things during this this crazy storm we had a while back you know that was one thing that we had going was the fireplace you know and it's just and that was the one thing that I was like you know okay the fire's going it's safe I will I'll, I'll survive you know I, I have that fear because I'm not from this from weather like this, like that. For me, the coldest it got would be like 45, 48, 38, 35, coldest it got. Maybe that one time it snowed in like 2004, you know? And it's like, you know, so for me, like being like stuck inside, I was like, this is different. This is different. It's kind of scary, you know, but the sense of fire and connection to it just kind of really welcomed me and made me feel safe. You know, and, and fire is one of the most important and strongest in-depth tools that we can use for a, a really good limpia, you know, because it establishes this gateway to spirit. It can serve as a tool for divination. We're able to look to assess the past, the present, and even the future, you know, and, and the future is a funny thing because it's, I don't believe our futures are set in stone. I believe I, I'm going to go into, you know, controversy here, but I believe that it, and the infinite timeline theory that there's so, that the future is infinite. And every time we make a choice, something shifts. And every time we consciously make an effort or consciously make a decision, our future changes. And it's never gonna be, you know, it's never quite what we hope it's gonna be. So, and it can always change and it's always willing to, to move and to kind of, to shift. And that's one of the great things about using Fire Olympias because it clears out the dents. It clears the surroundings, it empties everything. And it kind of, you know, finds a way to do away with these influences, with these uh, circumstances that, that affect us. Now, um, it also can serve as a great tool to create a path filled with grace, with positive transformations and marking a new beginning because now we've cleared away the old, which kind of prevents us from going back to it. And it's like, well, the old is gone. It's been destroyed. I literally cannot go back to it. We have to move forward from here on out. So it's just, it's, one of the most common types of ceremonies that's, that's used a lot within Curanderismo. And it has many purposes and there's many different kinds of meanings behind it. It also helps to act or to even to renew the energy within a space. So within like a building, within a home, within a temple, within a political space, a sweat bath, a ritual space. Whenever I do any work, I will always do it. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna demonstrate the way that I do my, my cleansing space to cleanse out my space. I do that every single time. Whenever I'm gonna do any kind of work, any kind of terror reading, any kind of anything, I will always cleanse out the space just to make sure that, you know, there's no negative energy, no outside influences or anything, just to keep us in a clear and safe environment, in a clear, safe space. Now, um, the effectiveness, which one of the things that I thought was really interesting is the more it will be more effective, the greater the faith, the curandera or curandera, 
and the participant has in the outcome. So the greater you believe in it, the greater the outcome will be in the end. Because again, it kind of goes back to this idea of manifestation and the, the, what we put into it and what we put out into the universe. And of course, the more intent, the more the purer you feel, like the purer intent that you, put, you pour into it, the greater the outcome is going to be. And it's just, and it's, it's interesting seeing it like that happen like that because I've never really given it thought like that. I've always like, well, yeah, it's going to work. But like the stronger faith you put into it, the greater the cleansing and the greater the outcome. Now, um, what I like to do, I'm going to demonstrate um, what I like to do for, for these cleansings. It's called a white fire Olympia. It cleanses the space instantaneously and rapidly. You basically just throw everything in a nice little like cast iron cauldron and then just light it on fire and the, the flame will shoot up and then it cleanses out, cleanses out the space and you just kind of let it burn out and just get to kind of watch the fire. So um, what I'd like to do for this, and um, I can post the like note portion like in the group or I can send if anybody's interested and would like to try it. I don't feel like it's appropriation only because again, it's, it's all about intent. And I feel like my big thing behind it is as long as you do it respectfully, I think, it's, I think you'll, you'll be okay. I like to do a couple of handfuls of Epsom salt. So as you can kind of, kind of see, they're just kind of, and there's just, I'll just kind of do it in a little cast iron, um, little cauldron, I was gonna say skillet, a little cast iron cauldron. Then I like to get a nice mix of dried herbs. So um, you can use things like basil, rosemary, chamomile, rue, mint, tobacco, parsley, sage, I mean, pretty much anything that you, that you feel right, that feels like, you know, like you're supposed to. So typically what I do when I do the, the cleansing, when I cleanse out spaces, I typically will use sage, not white sage. I'll use just, just regular kitchen sage. I'll use rosemary, I'll use lavender. And today, um, as I was kind of prepping for this earlier, I was doing a run through, um, the ancestors asked me to, to throw in some red rose petals. I picked them up and they fell over like two or three times. So I was like, okay, pick them back up. I was like, okay, okay, I get it. I get it, I'll add the rose petals in there. So I just, all I did is I kind of just kind of put it into a little bowl beforehand. And it's just, like I said, just kind of just a couple handfuls of each, you know, just, just a couple pinches. Um, I like to just kind of toss it in there. Then um, you'll just need some rubbing alcohol. I just kind of just, I just kind of toss it in there. I just kind of like, oh, that was a lot. That's gonna burn brightly. I just kind of will throw it in there just to kind of, you know, just, just to kind of give it a little bit of a set just to kind of moisten a little bit, just that it helps everything burn. Um, you can use a lighter, you can use like one of the like old school like candle lighters you can use. I'm a fan of matches because I love the way matches smell when you light them. So I like to use a match and just kind of toss it in there. Um, one of the things that I do like to do before I get, before I kind of go into this is I kind of I like to put myself kind of in a meditative zone, just kind of like, you know, tune into the energies that are that are that are within the herbs and just kind of speak my intention into it to cleanse out the space when I clear out negativity when I clear out anything that's holding me back that's no longer serving me you know just kind of something simple like that you can say kind of you can actually go if you have a, a particular petition if you're working if you're working on on cleansing someone out you can specifically ask them you know if they have anything in particular they like they want to, to let go of to get rid of then you can they can write on a slip of paper you just kind of put it in there and it'll burn out as well or just a, a general you know overall I like to kind of just light it and then just throw the match in there. And you can kind of see where it's just kind of burning there. I just kind of just kind of watch it, just kind of let it sit there and just let it burn. I like to let it go as it's going to say something like, into this fire, I release all energies that do not serve, all negativity that surrounds and all fears that limit. And just kind of just kind of like a mantra, just say it over and over and over again. Or some, again, something similar. You can say something like into the smoke, into the fire, into, you know, just cleanse the space out, get rid of the neg negativity. You know, sometimes you're in a bad mood, just get out, get out, go away, leave me alone. That'll work, that'll work too, because it's all about intent. It's all about what we put into the, what we want out of the room. And you kind of just let it go. And you just kind of let it burn itself out. It usually, depending on um, how much negativity is in the space, it may burn for like 10, 15, 25 minutes. Um, I did one um, in my old apartment that it burned, the flame was like two and a half feet high and it burned like that for like 13 minutes. And then it just kind of went poof, and it just put itself out. I was like, well, that was a lot of work that it was doing. So it's cleansed the space, it's cleansed out now. And um, one of the, the great things about doing this kind of a cleansing is you can do your entire house 
just kind of set up in the living room, open all the doors, open all the windows and just light it and it'll clear out the entire space for you. Close an entire room. You don't have to worry about walking room to room because let's face it, we all got things to do. We don't can't just, you know, spend countless hours just cleansing space because gotta, gotta, you know, be capitalists and, you know, make money and sell our labor. So, you know, and that's a great way to just kind of quickly cleanse out the space quickly and easily. And I totally agree with you. If that was a job, I would do that too. That would be like my career. But like I would do cleansings, I would do house blessings, I will do exorcisms and banishments. I would do it all. But yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much um, it. And then once it's done, if you're, like I said, if you're doing a, a cleansing for someone else, I would just kind of like soak it in. And after it cools down, it'd soak it for, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes, dump everything out and just kind of study what was left inside. Because one of the biggest things is it'll indicate how much of what the person has to let go, has let go. It's a nice, interesting way to kind of look at, you know, and understand like, how much work needs to get done? Are we putting in the work TM? Or is it just like, you know, we're doing some work? Or is it like, oh, we're doing some work? Like, okay, there's gonna be multiple sessions over time. Like, we gotta get through this, you need to release it. You know, regardless of how much of it is actually left inside the cauldron, you know, it, it just shows you that something has, has been released, you know, because you're letting it go, you're no longer serving your body. Like I tell you right now, as this is going, I, can, I literally feel like my shoulders have gotten lighter. I feel like my body's relaxed a little bit more because the space has been clean, cleansed out again. So it gives this nice sense of like, whoo, relax, like, okay, I'm not all hyper. I'm not, you know, I'm not anxious. My anxiety is not flaring. Like, it's just, ooh, nice and, nice and balmy. I feel like I'm sitting at the beach kind of thing. Nice and relaxed. So it's, it's something I would highly suggest if you want to try all power to you, go for it. If you'd like me to come over and, and walk you through it, I'd gladly do it for you as well. It's fun. I like doing this kind of stuff. I can prepare the mix for you and just tell you, just read this and just toss this in a, in a, in a, in a bowl and just toss in a match and you're good. You know, or I can come and do it for you. That's, that's something that if anyone is interested, you can hit me up on Facebook. Facebook, I'm listed as Alexander Beaverhausen. I would gladly do that. It's not a, you know, that's what I do. That's my job as a healer. I'm here to help facilitate healing for others because that's the reason why I was put on this earth is to help others. So, you know, and that's something that the ancestors have put strongly in me and have constantly reminded me like, hey, this is the reason why you're here. Like, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. This is why you're here. You gotta help other people. So, oh, and just like that, this is out. <laughs> that went out, nice. But yeah, so um, that's kind of what I had as a presentation. So I like to kind of open the floor now if there's any questions. I just saw the little top window there. Oh yeah, so that was a nice like. Um, but yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm more than I'd be more than glad to do so. Like, it's not. Um, mm. I like doing things like that. It, it helps me. I feel like I'm fulfilling a purpose and a life's mission, and you know. But again, I mean, like I said, are there any questions or anything? This is awesome. I, I want to see an in-person demo for sure. Oh, absolutely. I would love to be more than glad to do so. It's, um, and it's funny because you feel like, um, you feel the mad difference in the room. Like, it's just like going back to that. And I, what I'll do is I, I can post a video because I took a clip of the like, of the like, the small short little boomerang of the like, I think the flame was like, maybe like this big, give or take. And I just burned, I was like, whoa. I mean, you walked into the room and you could feel like just, it was just heavy. It was just really like, um, I'm trying to think like how to describe it. It was heavy. It was like, um, almost not, not so much like a darkness, but just, just, just heaviness. I just felt so much, I felt so lethargic and it was just really, you know, I was like, okay, enough is enough. Like I got to cleanse all the space did the thing and like I walked out of the room and I walked back in and the, the, the entire dynamic of the room shifted. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was a breath of fresh air. Like, I was like, whoa, this is really different. Like this is, this, you can feel the energy just shift in the room. But um, earlier, I just kind of want to bring this up because um, I have a friend when I was doing my run through that I was, that I was talking to them about it. Um, they asked me about the connection to root work. And this is kind of why I'm kind of bringing this full circle back. Um, there's a lot of connection. 
you know, one of the things that I looked at is one of the books that I, that I have been reading through and kind of getting a bigger, better understanding. It's called the Voodoo, the Voodoo Hoodoo Spellbook by Denise Alvarado. And I was kind of looking and doing some research on root work and just kind of trying to get a better understanding. And of course, being the academic, you know, you have to compare and contrast. Started looking and it, there's so much overlap, so much similarities. You know, you see a lot of, a lot of the root work, that, root work that's done within Hoodoo itself you know, and you see how it almost aligns with curanderismo, with brujeria, with, you know, you see this alignment, you see how there's so many overlap with herbs that do the same thing, that do similar things that you can, you know, nice little substitutions. And it's just, and even if you look at it from a purely like compare, compare contrast, you see a lot of, a lot of what's done in hoodoo itself uses a lot of religious iconic, iconography and a lot of religious texts and a lot of religious prayers and they're very similar. Like one of the biggest things I love to use is Florida water. I love to use it for everything, everything. I use it in cleansing. I use it in my diffuser and my oil warmers, like everywhere. I use it when I, when, I, when I mop, everywhere. Of course, the recipe for this particular brand is, um, and I promise I'm not a spokesperson. I don't get paid any penny, a penny for it, but I just, I swear by it, is the recipe is locked, is on, has been trademarked since the 1870s. So there's no exact, you can't make that same formula for that particular brand. But I have found similar, like, oh, make your own DIY Florida water. And um, they all, and both, in both books that I looked at, one of them was a hoodoo book and one of them was a book on curanderismo, mentioned the exact same prayer that you're supposed to pray over it. It's a, um, it's one of the Psalms, I think it's Psalm 96. And both traditions, ask you to recite that exact same psalm over the mixture while it's while it's brewing. I was like, and that's from two completely different parts of the world, two completely different time periods, but asking you to use the exact same thing. I just thought that was really cool. That was really interesting as, as far as like, from even from like a cultural aspect, like, you know, it's, um, yeah, interesting. Florida, uh, oh, I just saw the, the, the message on, well, Florida water. So basically Florida water can be used for cleansing it helps get rid of energies. It helps get rid of negative energy. It helps promote positive space. And it just smells great too. I like to wear, I'll put a couple of dabs on as, as just, just to wear this cologne sometimes, you know, but it's, um, and yes, that is my favorite brand, Lavin and Kemp. That's like my favorite. I tried others, but that's my favorite straight. It's something about um, the scent. And to see your question about using for fire cleansing, I have not tried it just yet. But I would imagine it can be used because it is alcohol based. So next time I do a fire cleanse and I will try it and I will let you know. I will try it and I will let you know. I imagine that would smell really great because usually there's some kind of citrus, there's florals, and then there's like the like the like your roots. So I would imagine it would smell pretty good. So hmm. also, um, I've got a PDF of the Voodoo Hoodoo spell book if anybody wants it. I know we're like violating like copyright, but yeah, we're broke. So <laughs> I've got that. If anybody wants it, I will gladly send it over. But um, yeah, are there any other questions? Any questions or anything? This has been really, really awesome. <laughs> doesn't even feel like an hour has gone by. It doesn't. Is, I know. I, I just looked at the time. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, it's already like, whoa, hour flew by. I'm definitely looking forward to like installments of this, this conversation, okay. like you focused so, on the fire yeah. and I'm definitely yeah. excited to so, hear more. Um, that's one of the things that I, I, I will mention, I mentioned earlier before we actually got started is um, this is just one of the many things, one of the many rights within Curanderismo itself. And I kind of wanted to start a, like a series and actually talk about the different aspects. Like this is only one type of cleansing. Like I can go into barridas, I can go into water cleanses, I can go into like all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, I was just, yeah. And that's something that back here, you can see the awakened messages sign. That's kind of something that we're looking into, um, shameless self plug. <laughs> that's kind mm -hmm. of one of the things that we're looking into hosting as well. I'm starting to have stuff regularly where we'll do like, um, let's talk about things. Like, let's talk about, you know, whatever. We'll pick a topic and just kind of go from there. One of the really fun things is, and I love this aspect because, because we're all, I'm gonna use the W where we're all witches, we are. You know, and it's one of those things where it's like, we live on the fringes of society. We are political. You know, that's, that's, that's our nature it's to be political. 
to fight for social injustice, to fight for injustice in general. That's who we are, you know, and that's, 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 at least that's, that's who I am. I'm someone that I will fight for injustice to my last breath and my last breath will be used to curse the phobes, you know, and the general assholes. Sorry, totally forgot about that. Forgot we're on camera here. You know, that'll be, that's what my last breath would be used for, you know, because I believe that strongly in it. You know, that's something we have to fight for the marginalized. We have to fight for the oppressed because we have this, we have privilege that they may not have. You know, and that's something that I recognize within myself. I have this privilege because of my education, because of where I live, because of the fact that I'm not within the Rio Grande Valley region. I can talk about these experiences, you know, and it, that allows me to use this, my privilege as a platform to like, hey, this is happening. Like, why, what are we not, why are we not doing anything about it? You know, and then that's something that's like, that's, really strongly, you know, a part of who I am is to fight for the voiceless. And that's what we live on the society for. You know, we're already ostracized, we're already marginalized. So what, what's the worst they can do? Further marginalize us, further oppress us? Like, sure, okay, cool. <laughs> but anyway, bringing that full back before I go off on a full tangent, that's part of the plan with Awakened Messages is to be able to do things like that and to, you know, provide a platform, provide a space, you know, and especially use what's happening out in the world, in the greater world, and have a panel and be like, you know, well, as those of us that are marginalized, that are on the fringes of society, like, this is how we view this, you know, this is what's happening, this is how we're going to fix it. Let's fight, let's talk about this, let's, let's, let's dialogue, let's open this conversation, because people may not know what's happening, which is something that I've learned a lot through my dissertation. What I'm looking at is contamination within my hometown region. And I've interviewed about 10 people and they've all said, I have no idea this, this happened here. I had no idea. I feel like a terrible person. I lived here all of my life, you know, 30, 40 years. And I had no idea this happened here, that there was this type of contamination within the city limits itself. You know, yes, it happened in between the 50s, between 1948 and 1968, but the city didn't clean it up until like 2000. So like, this is in a neighborhood that had pesticides that were used in Agent Orange that just sat on a slot outside in the open wind with no cover or anything. So neighborhoods and children were exposed to this chemical that was stored in a powder form and no one did anything about it for well over 60 years. So, you know, and that's the kind of thing that's like, you know, this happened within the city, you know, within the last 60, the last 80 years, I just realized we're not, in, it's, it's a long time. <laughs> um, you know, and it goes through, you know, and it's just kind of like, if this didn't happen, well, there was no dialogue. And that's where, what's what I want Awaken Messages back here to be able to do. And have, to open these dialogues, have these discussions, because, I mean, got to use a platform. It's going to be capitalist, might as well use it for good. But yeah, so that's, that's a, my brief rant. I will end my rant there. Get off, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> This was awesome. I am really looking forward to the follow-ups. Yes, I'm looking forward to them too. I'm ready to start planning. And as a matter of fact, as soon as we hang up, I'm going to start planning. And summer solstice at your place. Yes, we'll have summer <laughs> solstice. Um, depending on how um, things are and as far as like yeah. vaccines and everything, if everyone can, if everyone gets vaccinated, I will be down to have belting like in the backyard, have, you know, maypole and have just literally do the whole thing. Just have a big, you know, celebration where we just celebrate, you know. And I know that life won't be normal; it won't be the same. But like, you know, we can make it different. We can make it, you know, where we feel safe, we feel welcome, you know. And the great thing is, this is a safe space. So like, there's tons of room. I've got air mattresses. If people want to get drunk and sleep over, that's totally fine. We can have a big old summer party. Like, it's it's cool. There's food. We'll have a good time. And otherwise, we could do summer solstice, and then we'll do like. My big one is uh, sewing for Dia de los Muertos, like have a big old alfaro outside and just, you know, That'd have a nice amazing. celebration. Cause I, I like to do um, a little, I, I will, I'll do a little ceremony because I'm, because of my, uh, I lost my grandmother uh, last summer. Oh my God, it was for the year. Who she got me mad. Um, you know, like, you know, that's something just to honor them. Cause I, I work a lot with the ancestors. So I'm a lot of like, you know, a lot of what I do is to honor them. You know, and, I, and it hits home a lot because I've watched a lot of like, I was watching the Book of Life the other day and I caught myself bawling at the, at the land of the forgotten. I was like, you know, no ancestor should ever have to have that where they disappear because they're forgotten. You know, as long as someone is alive and honoring them, they live on forever. And it just makes me, you know, I think about my grandmother, the hate for her to disappear. 
never her soul to disappear because no one remembers her. So that's one of my big thing. That's like, you know, it's like, no, God has got to honor them. Got to celebrate them, you know, and, and I usually will, will pray to them. You know, those of them, those of you who have been forgotten to time, whose names have been forgotten, you know, I also honor you. And it's, you know, and, and that goes to anyone's ancestors, you know, because at least someone should honor them. And I try, you know, and that, that's kind of a big part of my practice, which is why the other list one does is so big to me, which is kind of why I'm wearing a sugar skull shirt. <laughs> But yeah, I know that's going to be a fun, that's like, that's the plan. I want to do, have big events like that and big <laughs> within safety reasons, within safety reasons, of course. But yeah, that'll be a fun one. And um, yeah, depending on where things go, I'll, I will keep the group posted and, you know, we can have a nice fun little meetup and. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing and for being here and. I'm going to post Absolutely. the recording either tonight or tomorrow, sure. um, depending how long YouTube takes this time. And uh, I will put it up on YouTube. Do you want it public sure, or private? Public, that's fine. I didn't say I, had, I didn't okay. say anything awesome. that was like, and even then it's like I said, it's a platform. You know, if somebody <laughs> out there that that is far more experienced than I am is like, hey, you said something's wrong. Cool. What's the opportunity to teach me then? You know, I'm, I'm here to I'm here to learn. But yeah, no, I, I'm awesome. totally cool with that. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see yes, you again we'll see soon. You again. And thank you. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yep. Thank you.